Hello, I'm Tim Rogers. You were watching Kotaku.com, and today I am playing John Wick Hex, which is available on October 8th for Mac and PC through the Epic Games Store Game Launcher Program .exe, or whatever it's called. Now, John Wick Hex is a game that appeals to me on so many levels, a myriad levels, manifold levels, that I knew the moment Kotaku.com editor-in-chief Stephen Totillo told me that he wanted me to make a video about it, I knew immediately that if I tried to make a video full of punchy, punched-up writing with snippy quips and pertinent clips from the game full of terse, clean editing, I knew that I would die in the process of professing exactly what I feel for exactly what this game represents. So I've decided to instead perform this video in the format that we here at the Kotaku.com headquarters Goblin Bunker office refer to as a dead stream. Except, you know, I don't really like the words dead stream. It means like a stream that's not live. So I'm gonna, I, I propose we start calling it an off stream, an offline stream. Shout me out in the comments if you think that's a better name. We're gonna just go ahead and get right into the game. It starts with this lovely shade of magenta pink. And as you move the mouse, you get to move John Wick's back a little bit here. We're gonna click the word begin. Like that it's begin and not start. Um, notice he has a tattoo on his back of a dog. I like that. So John Wick Hex is a strategy game. It's a tactics game based on the John Wick movie universe. Now, when that was first announced that they were making a video game about John Wick and that it was a tactic strategy game and not, for example, you know, the obvious example of a shooting game, I saw a couple of people react surprisedly like, oh, a tactics game based on John Wick? That famous action movie? How weird. And I immediately thought, no, that's that's it. I mean, that's that's what you really need for John Wick because none of us, let's face it, not even me, will ever be able to think as quickly as John Wick. However, in this game, you can try, because you'll see that there's two options when you start the game. You can do the core game, as designed. I like how it says, as designed. They should put that next to the normal difficulty of more games, in my opinion, because I believe normal is how the game is designed, and hard is just for the extra challenge. That said, I do play on hard. Or expedited. You will have only five seconds to choose your next action. So not quite as quickly as John Wick would think in real life, where he's thinking in microseconds and milliseconds, though... Five seconds to choose an action. I love the idea of this sort of a speed chess strategy game. I just took a while to complete that. I would not have done well if that had been a strategy game. A speed chess style strategy game is really befitting John Wick. And it kind of lends like a lot of weight to the way I pitched this game to uh, Riley McLeod here in the Kotaku.com office earlier today was I said, it's like Hitman Go, the arcade game. A single character, single player, tactic strategy game. Arcade style. We can call them hero strategy games if we want. So you're going to see, some time ago, before Helen, that's why I pointed out the dog tattoo. Helen, his, his wife, is the one who leaves him the, the dog when she dies. So this is John Wick pre-dog ownership. Now, I, I actually quite acquired a dog this weekend. So Surely I went overboard in preparation to make this video, and, and you're telling me it's, it tells the story of a John Wick before he even owned a dog. Well, oh, you notice that's that's uh, Hex is voiced by none other than Troy Baker, and he does such a good job in this game that you'll be glad he gave up making bread to pursue his dream of voice acting. Karan, voiced by Lance Reddick. You'll recognize him from The Wire, or if you are a true connoisseur, from his appearance on The Eric Andre Show. And my god darn best friend in the world, Ian McShane, voices his own character, which is wonderful. Give me some Ian McShane, where is it? Give me some Ian McShane, where is he? Notice you can jiggle around these comic panels by moving your mouse in the appropriate panel. I find that really interesting. Kind of a weird, sort of a, makes you feel like you're playing a portable Metal Gear game. Speaking of portable, why is this game not on the Nintendo Switch? It should be on the Nintendo Switch right away. Until you decide Here's Winston. Oh, Winston. You have a higher purpose. So you see, the story of this game is this mysterious stranger named Hex has captured John Wick's best buds, I did enjoy a little theater. including Ian McShane from HBO's Deadwood. One episode of Game of Thrones, Julian Fellows as Dr. Thorne, 
one-time hopeful for the role of James Bond and uh, former British TV soap opera heartthrob. And let us not forget, he's also Mr. Wednesday on the TV adaptation of American Gods. Ian McShane, one of my favorite dudes. So we're actually here in the beginning of the game. Now you're going to see, we can rotate the camera, and we can move this uh, camera. WASD moves our camera, and uh, QE rotates. There's no way they could do that on a controller, so that's probably why the console version is taking a while. We're going to move over to here. Camera control. Okay, so it's going to actually, since I've loaded the first mission, it's going to give me the tutorial. I've already played this, though. This game is all about playing these levels over and over again. So, exacting tactics. Again, almost action-style tactics. It's an exaction game, not an action game. You get interrupted if you cross an enemy's line of sight. So, where an enemy appears. I don't think it has to do with line of sight, sorry. If an enemy crosses JW's line of sight. So, we got a guy here. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't know this guy, but I don't like him. And I'm probably gonna shoot him in the head and kill him. John Wick has very good aim, and I'm looking at a guy from behind. Very high chance I'm gonna get him. You notice I have my custom handgun. John Wick's custom handgun has 15 bullets. When you kill an enemy, they drop their gun, and you can pick up their gun. However, John Wick, in a sh true, like, John Woo style, will drop his gun when he picks up a new gun because he's not going to be carrying dead weight around. So you lose John Wick's custom handgun if you pick up another gun. I feel like that's a interesting little challenge. So he's carrying a 9mm automatic. You'll notice that when I hover the mouse over him, you just want to look real quick. At the top of the screen, we have this timeline, right? We can see negative two seconds up on the left, and we can see positive two seconds on the right. And you'll see that this guard is doing is in the middle of a movement action that will take him uh, uh, 1.4 seconds. Now if I click on here, and I choose to shoot... I have a hit chance of 100%, again, because John Wick has very good aim. You'll see I have 0.5 seconds preparation, and then uh, this little, what do you call it, uh, 0.5 seconds or here of, uh, of prepping for it. I have more than 0.5 seconds of preparation. So the white is preparation, and then the pink is shooting. Damage happens during the pink zone. So I'm real close. I'm r close enough to him to shoot him, so we're just going to shoot him twice. <laughs> Guy's dead. The man died. You'll notice again, so I'm going to move here. This movement is going to take me, if I move one square, you'll see it says 0.8 seconds, here's 0.8 seconds, here's 1.2, here's 1.6. Um, I'm just going to move the 1.6. Oh, and it's giving me a tutorial after I've already done the thing. Thanks, Mom. Uh, we're going to do that. Just give me the, give me, give me over here. Pick up the 9mm automatic. All right, let's go over here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, what do we got? Uh, uh, what do we got? I'm going to go over here. Uh, strike an enemy with your melee to damage him. Yeah, I can do that. So, striking an enemy does focus and health damage. Now, focus, you'll see down at the bottom, 10 out of 10. I have, keep moving, do not worry. Game pause if an enemy appears, get the exit. I'm trying to get to the exit. There's an exit in every zone. And these maps are nice little bite-sized maps. That's the exit. The exit is blocked. It has an X. It means you can't get there. There's a condition you have to fulfill first. So, I'm going to get here. And you'll notice I can only see so far around specific objects. And that's okay. Because John Wick, uh, John Wick, uh, he can react very fast. I want to take. I want to show you something real quick. If you can go to the visuals here, take a look at this. I can turn off the bloom. Why would you turn off the bloom? Look at the bloom. Looks nice. See that? That's bloom. That looks good. That's without bloom. I mean, come on, leave that on. You can actually get this game running at a uh, 4K and 60 FPS, which is pretty neat. But I can't do that while capturing, uh, unfortunately. So I'm playing it. I'm playing. I'm enjoying it at 1080p for you, for your sake. So it does look quite nice at 4K performs very well let's get over here and we'll see we got a guy 0.4 seconds so he's moving and he will be for 0.4 seconds i am going to since this is the first level i'm going to play it sort of noobishly i'm going to go straight out into the open i got him i got him he shot me he god darn shot me didn't expect that to happen there were decisions i could have made to make that not happen however i didn't do them because now i only have five bullets left i'm going to pick up the nine millimeter automatic so now we've left John Wick's custom handgun on the, on the floor. On the floor and on the ground. Yeah, so he's telling me that this is telling me that there's intros and executions. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, I already knew that because I already explained that to you. We got this guy coming out the window. So you'll see this guy's got... He's doing his movement and he's got a... This is his spawn. So his spawn takes him 0.6 seconds. Which is neat to know. I'm going to just shoot him and kill him. 
One, two. That's how you make it to popcorn. Get over here. So he's going to shoot me. You're going to see. I got a 100% hit chance, but you'll notice that I'm going to get shot first. Right? So how long is that going to take me to shoot? It's going to take me something like one second, 1 1.5 second to execute the full double pop. So we're going to do this instead. I'm going to go over here. It's going to take me 0.8 seconds, but a moving target is harder to hit. So he did not hit me. So in other words, I was able to avoid both of his shots. Now this big boy, I got a 90% hit chance. We're going to go ahead and pop him twice. My ammo is like, well, crikey, I know it's low. I'm going to pick up more after I shoot this guy. I missed. Not only that, I believe I missed uh, twice. It's going to take him 0.4. Notice my shot here is going to get off slightly before his shot. That's neat. So this is just a hilariously technical action game. Hilariously technical. So many little numbers. Numbers and gesticulations and technicalities on the screen at all times. We got 10 bullets now. 10 out of 17. Nobody wants to give me a full magazine. They just want to give me a little tiny bit. We're going to get out of here. And then John Wick says, let's get the John Wick out of here. I don't know if that's what he says. We're going to go ahead and this is the best part. No, I'm sorry. I, I should. 2020, I'm making a New Year's resolution to no longer ever say this is, you know what the best part of something is. It's not the best part. This is something great. You know, one of the things I like about this game is this watch replay feature. So let's watch. Look at this. All right. It replays the whole level in the real time as dictated by the action lengths that you see at the top of the screen in the timeline, and it replays it as a John Wick-style cutscene. And you've got very realistic Keanu Reeves movements. No Keanu Reeves voice, though. Keanu Reeves' movements are in there. And John Wick is very calm, calm and calculating as he crouches to get his claws on a clip. Area complete. That whole replay took like 30 seconds. And it's fun because you get to watch your painstaking decision-making process rendered into this high-speed, blazing, fast race car cutscene. A little bit less running than you'd get with, you know, the, the real John W. We're going to go ahead and get all the way to the boss of this level. I'm going to try to power through it because I feel like I didn't do as well the first time as I could have. So the thing about this is... I'm going to get over here. I'm going to get him. We're going to try to punch him in the back. Some actions have a probability of success per execution. Crouching increases your chances of shots. Okay. I'm right behind this guy. So he's doing heck all for the next 0.3 seconds. We're going to go ahead and just try to hit him. I'm going to punch him in the back. I have a 100%. I can take him down, which is going to give him three damage. It's going to kill him instantly and destroy two of his focus, but it's going to take one of my focus. So let's actually use something that takes focus. Focus is neat. It's your... Uh, And I immediately revealed myself as a punk and a chump. And I am going to... I can spend 0.8 seconds to move over here. He's going to fire at me in 0.6 seconds. So can I get over here before he shoots? And will that reduce his hit chance to zero? It absolutely did not. John Wick took a hit. And John Wick is going to try to squeeze, and he did not squeeze off a single goddamn shot. And now I've moved to the side here of this pillar, which I now have a line of sight on him. He's prepping for something from one second. I'm going to get off two shots before that one second is up, and I have a 90% chance of hitting. He has stepped out. He has evaded me once again. However, this gentleman has 0.2 seconds left on whatever his idle phase is. We're going to go ahead and pop him twice. This guy right here, I'm going to shoot him twice as well. I am making a ham massacre of this. 0.5 seconds. Looks like daddy still lives. I am going to retrieve this gun. We're not doing too good, you and me, John. We're not doing too good. And that's okay. Again, arcade-style strategy game. So... I don't know if you all knew this about me. I haven't actually made any videos about strategy games here at Kotaku.com because I've, I make a lot of videos about a lot of things. I've made about 200 videos in the last two years. Watch some of them if you want. If you don't want to watch them, that's okay. I love strategy games. In fact, I would call myself a strategy maven. A definite, definite strategy buff. This guy's shooting at me. He hit me. I thought moving would make it so I didn't get hit. I was just going straight for this bandage. 
trying to play differently than I played last time. I'm trying to show you what happens when you make mistakes. 60% chance? Yeah, I'll take those odds. I'm strategy maven. Now, when you say strategy games, you might think... You know, I'm gonna say, like, what game this reminds me of. Ah, heck. I'm gonna try to make a quick side... I'm gonna qu make a movement to lower his chances of hitting me, because if I stand still and shoot at him, there's a chance he'll hit me. And there's no way I can get up a shot before he gets up a shot on me. Health is low. I got shot. I'm a punk! What can I say? I'm a punk and I'm playing like a chump, but I just took a dump on that guy. Let's get over here. We're gonna try to bandage. Uh, I think this guy's gonna see me before I can possibly bandage myself. So I'm gonna run away like the tiny baby dog I am. Bandaging takes four seconds. He saw me, point seconds. He's on the move. I have a hit chance of 60% or I can throw my gun at him for 70%. Yeah, I'm a strategy maven. I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. You might not think I'm a strategy maven because I've never really mavened about strategy in your presence before. Though I do have a... I'm scared of how eclectic my tastes are. I'm going to tell you the truth. If I say I like strategy games, if I try to say what game this reminds me of, you're going to tell me. So reloading discards all the rounds in your magazine, you can only carry one weapon. Okay, interesting. Weapons are big decisions here. So if I'm going to say what game this reminds me of, I know that somebody in the comments is going to go, Ugh, don't you mean XCOM? Or Final Fantasy Tactics? Or Fire Emblem Advance Wars? You know, okay, sure. Like Advance Wars and Fire Emblem, it has very, very clean math. But for me, when you say, when I talk about strategy games, I like... I'm a weirdo and, and an idiot, and I have spent the last 20 years of my life in a flailing attempt to cultivate the sort of taste that uh, is inimitable and inscrutable and uh, at the expense of all else you want to talk about strategy games for me I'm going to talk about we're going to watch the replay here let's take a look I don't think I did too much better than the first time I played because this, this hand bone maneuver at the beginning sucked you want to talk about strategy games I like this game reminds me of Wild Arms XF Wild Arms Crossfire which had guns and high ground which, if combined, allowed you to perform these massive one-hit kills. And it reminds me of Vandal Hearts on the original PlayStation, which, if you performed backstab maneuvers or assist maneuvers, you pretty much got instant kills. Guaranteed blood guys are spraying up. The mouse cursor on the screen kind of really kills the John Wick vibe. We're going to move that off of there. It looks like John Wick, the, like, image comics, doesn't it? I like it. I absolutely love it. I mean, my, my favorite tactics games, I like Tear Ring Saga, I like Berwick Saga, I like Armodyne. What can I say? I've cultivated eclectic, eclectic tastes. And you know what? This game manages to do something just new enough to freak me out. And I'll admit I'm making hasty decisions here. But different enemies have different enemies. Different enemy types have different weapons. So guys with guns have guns. People without guns. Brawlers don't have boys guns. Are unpleasant if I... Listen, it's Ian McShane. Ian McShane is talking. Our kind Ian of McShane is talking. Listen to this. We are murderers, thieves, and worse. Speak for yourself. We live by a code. There are rules. What a clean, beautiful voice he has. Perhaps the best in the world. To transcend them. You know who else's voice I like is Ralph Innocent. Uh, also, he was uh, the father in The Witch. You know that guy? Shout me out if you like that guy's voice. Maybe best voice in the world. Maybe the absolute best voice. The only voice better than Ian McShane. Ian McShane. That means beautiful man. Uh, he's just a beautiful man. I can crouch. I know I can crouch. I can crouch in real life, too. I do it like a hundred times every morning. Uh, you know, it's good for you. Gets the blood pumping. Better than coffee. When crouching, you can only roll. And rolling takes two focus. And rolling is actually a legit way to avoid gunfire. Ooh. We have sprung up in a crouched position right by this bad pump. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit this punk with two shots. 100% hit chance. Notice when a melee fighter gets close to you, there's this melee capsule appears. This melee capsule. We're going to stand up. When stood up, you can see further. And we've got two... Punk arenas who are here and don't like John Wick. First of all, why wouldn't you like John Wick? Who couldn't like him? Right? Somebody in the office today, we're not going to say who, 
was like, you know, I haven't seen John Wick. Are those movies any good? I just about performed apoplexy. Oh, I'm gonna get shot. I should have rolled the dice on that 60p percent, I mean. 60p percent. We're gonna change stance. Duck. I'm gonna pump off too. And we're gonna roll over here. And I'm gonna pump off two more. Hit chance 100. And then we're gonna stand. And we're gonna go over here. So you see how it's just a very Spartan minimalist strategy game. It's a game after after all of my heart. Now we're gonna be shooting at the same time here. This is fun. John Wick got hit. Very strange, because you don't really see that happen too much in the movie. John Wick got god darn hit. He doesn't get hit unless it's like a big cinematic moment. How could you not like John Wick? So there's still people in the, uh, here in the 21st century. Ooh. Humans who uh, haven't seen John Wick and are not sure if it's any good. And that just, it's like a blow dryer for my brain. I don't have very much focus left. I have eight bullets in my gun. There's a gun with eight bullets left in it. Where did that punk go? Hidden information, you have to keep your eye on where an enemy goes so when they disappear into the shadows, you know full well where they are. I can't leave someone alive because JW wouldn't. Oh, there's a punk right over there. I am going to. Now, the more movement squares you commit to John Wick is a slower shot than this guy I'm gonna have to take the damage or not take the damage because that guy is a punk who missed so that's good I am not playing my best here I'm sorry I purport myself to be a, a quote unquote strategy maven and then I end up just making these bone knuckled maneuvers here ooh that pink blood. First of all, there's going to be some freak in the comments being like, why is the blood got to be pink? It should be red. It's cartoony and it's fake and it's dumb that it's not red. And I'm, I'm going to just be like, man, come on. It's a it's a video game, buddy. You can, it's not real. It's, it's okay for it to not be red blood. It's stylized. It's in the coloration of the uh, John Wick 2 movie posters. This guy has a gun. We're going to kill him. Oh, you have 10 bullets. Uh, me takey. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. It's a nice Spartan strategy game. Shout me out in the comments if you've ever played Wild Arms Crossfire. I love that game. Really wish there was some kind of a way to play it again without busting out a PSP. This gentleman here is gonna act in 0.4 seconds. I have 10 bullets. Hit chance of 80%. It told me this fight's gonna get dangerous quickly, so I should play the odds. Ooh. 0.6 seconds till this gentleman shoots. I can duck in 0.2, and I can roll in 0.6, but during the roll, I have evasive superiority. 0.9 seconds for a roll. He got me! Oh, dang it. And I lost the focus. His, his uh, hitting me during my roll interrupted me. Not 100% clear on the way that mechanic works. I mean, I think I am pretty close to clear. I'm gonna get that gun, take that gun. Taking that gun took me some time. Can't get out the exit yet. I stupidly moved real far. Uh, while doing that, we are gonna move again, just a tiny square. Okay, this is a, he's a brawler and he's in the middle of his spawn motion. So we're just gonna pop him as he comes out the door. It's good. That's what I assume is going to happen to me every morning in, uh, when I leave my apartment in New York City. The big city. You know, this being America and such. So now we get to this uh, semi-awkward moment where the game is telling us via its design that uh, we can't leave yet. Or can I leave? It's telling us via its design that I can't I can leave. What the heck? I thought there was going to be a little bit more of a fight there. Why don't you go ahead and show me that? This is something during my consulting time I refer to this as what I call Froyo game design. You know all those Froyo joints? Body falls onto the hood of the car. All those Froyo joints where you get to put your own toppings on the Froyo and then if you, you eat it and you're dissatisfied, you say, Ah, god darn it. Uh, why did I put so many Reese's Pieces on there? 
Why did I put mango and peanut butter? Because it's not good. Bad combo. Right? If you're dissatisfied, it's your fault. You still, you still had a quote-unquote good time being dissatisfied, and it encourages you to want revenge. So I look at this, and I'm like, this is one of the worst choreographed John Wick action scenes I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's comically bad. It's as close to a John Wick action scene as a Grand Theft Auto open world segment is to The Godfather, right? However, it's my fault. These are my ham bone fingered decisions playing out here in this sped up real time. Imagine a screenplay John Wick wanders back and forth behind a car. When he left the area as a guy was in pursuit, I would have liked to have killed that last guy. Let's go ahead and check out the next level. We're gonna get a little bit further. We're gonna go here to the approach. A direct assault is likely expedient. What it lacks in subtlety, it makes up in speed. Let's get in here. Okay. Now I, I really brainballed this one the first time I played it because I like tried to, uh, tried to like take this guy down and it went into this massive snowball of failure avalanche. So I'm just gonna shoot him in the head. Because he's in guard mode for 1.5 seconds. I, I hate to do this to you, buddy, because, you know, times are tough and such. Again, you commit to a large movement. If you commit to a long walk, there's a, a higher chance of just getting punked in the middle of it. So sometimes you have to wait. Okay, this is good. The game is firing off this uh, tutorial hint just as JW steps into the hall. And that is not where I wanted him to be. So in other words, we're going to go ahead and click wait. Okay. So this guy here. I pop him. We're going to pop him at a 90. But that's going to take me 1.5 seconds. He's at 0.6 seconds until... We're going to go ahead and get him. I also want to show you what happens when I parry a dude. I can't parry him. So I can, I can strike this dude, and that's going to eliminate his focus. So he needs focus to perform, like, these expensive combat maneuvers. Did he get me? No, he didn't get me. Okay, we're going to go. He's dead. I'm going to bandage myself because John Wick comes from a world where gold coins unlock all doors. And where uh, dogs make good I'm dead presents. So... A bandage in the middle of a heated moment of combat. More than enough. I'm playing a bad do -si do here. Can I shoot before this punk approaches? 0.9 seconds, this punk is going to be here. Right? 0.9 seconds. I can throw the gun in 1.2 seconds. 0.9 seconds. This person will have reached me. And I can have a shot off in one second. No, I can have a shot off slightly before that, so we're going to have a fraction. See that tiny fraction I can have. Enemy strike incoming. I can dodge by stepping out of the melee capsule or do a parry. I think it's too late for that. Wait, no. This person is still alive. Nice. We're going to parry. So my parry will hit before the strike. Ready for this? I got him. And uh, that's death. I, 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 I'm, I did pretty good there. Wait. Uh, daddy's dead. I didn't actually kill this individual yet. I can dodge for three focus. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I can shoot as this person, uh, has 0.3 seconds left in their little cycle. I'm gonna get hit by this person. No, I'm not. Need to learn how to read the, read the rules better. I love it, though. It's, it's just so monolithically brain-slippery. So now we get to the part where it's going to finally set me loose on a pretty tough encounter where I can't really get away with ham-fisting it. So to master John McHex, play the timeline. If they're attacking you, will any of your attacks execute before theirs does? Maybe you should hide or be moving at the point of execution to lower the chance of being hit. All actions can be previewed on the timeline before you confirm them. Arcade style, I call this. Okay, we have an individual over here. We have a health power up right here. I only have four bullets in my magazine. I do have a 90% chance of hitting this person, a 10% chance of missing. I can hit before this person uh, pop, 
possibly before this person moves. Though it looks like they have 0. 0.2 seconds before they start their next action. Their next action could be movement, right? Let's see what we got. <gasps> I should have remembered that from the last time I played the game. Uh, we're going to step back here. No. This person has 0. 0.0 seconds before they do something. This is a brawler. Brawler's got to hit me personal like. I'm going to get approached. Let's see what we can do. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, okay. So the brawler, it's going to take them like a second. There's another person showing up over here, 9.9 .9 seconds. It means they're in the middle of their spawn. I can take them down. I can shoot and throw my gun. I can strike. Let's be, let's be wild and rambunctious. I'm going to hit this person. Okay, I hit the person. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and shoot this person for two health and one focus. I ran out of ammunition. We're going to do a punch, but I'm about to get punched. So I can't do that. I'm going to get struck while parrying. Shoot. We're going to dodge back. My focus is low. Uh, my focus is low. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I haven't really used focus much. I can't believe I ran out of ammo. This is horrible. This is what it's like when you try to explain something. I'm going to throw my gun. I missed. I'm going to get hit. I got hit. I can't believe I lost it this bad. I'm just going to go for the record. I did not die during my first uh, playthrough. I am going to die. I got shot while in the middle of that. I'm going to refocus, which takes 1.1 second, but refills my focus. I am going to move over here. We're going to sit. Takes me slightly less than that. I'm going to roll. I'm going to get shot while rolling. I'm going to roll in here, and we're going to... No, not going to hit this guy. Crikey. I'm going to get shot before I can strike him. This man can fire a gun before I can throw a fist. Uh, we're going to kill him now. Kicked him and killed him. Give me your gun. I really scrubbed the tub on this rub-a-dub. That sucked. I made the wrong choices, and John Wick's gonna look like a complete beef bone during this little uh, replay at the end of this match. Uh, you went the wrong way, John. Sometimes you gotta rotate the map, you know what I mean? Exit locked. Uh, hey, do you wanna get shot in the head while you exit this door? You want to try to approach me? 50%? Yeah, I'll roll that dice, idiot. Give me that gun. Oh, this person has one second before they, uh... Before they decide what they want to do. 70 percent Yeah, I'll, I'll roll that. Did I not do the kill? No, I did the kill. We did the kill. That's good. Give me that 9mm. We got a person here. Just see what we can do. We're gonna wait. Okay. Waiting is a good way to get your mysterious dungeon on. Little roguelike action. I believe we're done now. This replay is going to look atrocious. Don't play video games about thinking while talking. Thinking and talking at the same time are difficult. Which is why you're supposed to think before you talk. You don't notice any any chess pros explaining what they're doing during the match, okay? Oh, um, John Wick. More like John Whiff, because he whiffed the punch. I made I made one really bone-tastic maneuver here, right at the end of this alleyway. Ah, pink blood. Threw my gun. Looks like where was he throwing it? Got shot again. Punched again, shot again. Steps over by the 97 sign, bandages himself while a bullet misses him. 
does kind of a little discombobulation. Stans takes a couple hits to the chest. Kick in the crotch, grab of the gun. John Wick is armed and once again, marginally more dangerous than he was before. Notice the items don't appear during the replay. Goes down the wrong side of the alley. Guy comes out of the door. Die, my friend. Die, my other friend. Stands sentinel over the gun. Aim and fire, another kill. And then the exit. We're gonna keep going. We are now inside the room. Edgar is upstairs. Because if your name was Edgar, you'd be upstairs too. Lance Reddick here. Nowhere in this city is safe. Hearing Lance Reddick talk in a cutscene is pretty much 40-year-old me's version of watching a cutscene in Ninja Gaiden on the NES. I'm not even kidding. Pageantry and false. Got HBO's own in my god darn video game. So this is the first mission that I really thought was chill as heck. I mean, I liked the whole thing so far, but I like this mission because I got to go up these stairs, wind around, and then get into the door to, you know, meet the bad guy. And we got a couple of punks up on this second floor. We got some high grounds. So this is going to be pretty fun. I can actually shoot this individual. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. 80%. I'd take that bet. Is he dead? She dead? You know what? I can't track the individual. I can't see the individual. Shoot. Chance 100%. My shot's going to come off way after their shot. Maybe I should just backstep. Backstepped. Believe that obliterated their chances of hitting me. And you're going to get shot. PBR. Point blank range. And we've got another individual here. I was tempted to wait for a moment, though I don't think I'm going to. I am going to get shot. There is no dodge the gun at the last second maneuver. So now all just kind of becomes about dealing with the bad decision you made. Again, I could have played this game a lot more before making this video. I didn't. You know why? I wanted it to be real. I'm going to get shot. Which gun wielder looks upon me now and laughs? Someone here thinks that they can get a piece of the John Wick. Baba Yaga himself. Unfortunately, I have not yet uncovered the pencil weapon. I now have 10 HP, health points, heart points. We got a little pink blip going this way. Where? Individuals up here have designs on taking down history's greatest hitman, John Wick. Hitman, silent assassin, John Wick, very loud assassin. 40%? It all becomes about, do you want to play the odds? I'm not going to get this guy. Oh, I got him! 40% times two, god darn snake eyes for him. Cry me a river for me. Oh, an individual has approached here. I ignored the tooltip. Crikey, 60%. We're going to roll the dice and miss both times. We're going to miss both times. Watch this. Now we got double hit. I'm going to dodge with my minus three. You want to watch this, buddy? And he, uh, I have three more folks to attempt to dodge again. We're going to dodge into this corner here. Now I'm going to try to shoot him. 0.3 seconds before he acts. And I'm not going to like whatever it is he chooses to do. He's done. Never mind. He was a chump and he died a chump. We're going to go ahead and play some more numbers up here. Got an individual around the corner. Again, information is hidden now because of reflecting John Wick's particular vantage point at this point in time. However, I think I know where that person is. We're going to wait, and we're going to wait, and we're going to wait. This is not turning out exactly as I'd hoped. I have one bullet in my gun. And I see several guns over here. These white outlines indicate the memory of a gun. John Wick knows a gun was dropped there. I'm going to shoot this individual once going to take one of this individual's focus. This is this is just a bad maneuver. I got one foot in the jackpot right now. Uh, we're going to step right here. Ah, I'm going to get chumped. You know what? I'm going to give you that point two seconds. And I'm going to punch you right now and it's going to take a while. Or is it? I believe you're dead. Step through. There's a gun right there that I could have grabbed. I didn't because I'm a chump and an idiot. Again, 
it's uh, it's it's difficult to come under here uh, under these hot lights and make rational decisions. Oh, an individual within a window. I have an 80% chance of hitting, you know what? I played cards before. Do that again. Oh, what a what a nice sublime little video game. I would much rather play this in the dark by myself than have to play it for someone's entertainment because it just feels I feel like I reveal so much for an aspiring uh, poker opponent to know about me. Exit is blocked. Enemies close. No enemies are close to me. No enemies are close to me. Where are they? Show me the narcs. Oh. Ah, crikey. I see you. This reminds me of that scene early in John Wick 1. Okay, where where is the enemy? Where John Wick shoots the guy through the glass? You remember that? Crikey. I got, like, I feel like both feet are out of the jackpot right now. I'm gonna get shot, god darn. No, you know what? I'll take that bet. You got 0.1 seconds. I got 100%. Yeah, you're dead, you idiot. Should have put your brain on before you came into John Wick's house. Uh, pro tip, any house John Wick's in, that's John Wick's house. Let's watch the replay there. Remember this part from the movie? Remember this part? Where John Wick got shot from three different directions at the same time and walked through a guy, shot the guy in the, in the neck? Oh, you got just put on the ground from close range. The wine glasses are undisturbed on the tables. John Wick with the quick bandage work. Oh, you gotta love John Wick's dedication to shooting guys with that Pulp Fiction look. That black skinny tie on the white shirt. John Wick is uh, pulling off something very difficult, which is the black tie on a black shirt. Very difficult to pull that off. There's when I shot the dude through the window. Good little cinematic cut there to show that individual getting owned. Another own. Here's the end where he goes, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm looking for a jackpot. Looks like today I've accidentally snagged my brain on the phrase, looking for a jackpot. We're going to complete this area. So we got one more to go. That's the boss. We're going to clear the room. CTR. Now in real life, there are plenty of ways to clear a room. I should have bandaged myself at the beginning of, or at the end of that level, because I, I, I could have actually benefited from that. Wait, I am bandaged. Never mind. No, I need gun, not bandage. Look, I told you. There's so much information on the screen, I just get scared. One thing I'm going to tell you about this. Get that bandage. That took me a whole second to do, and I got shot in the back. You have 0.4 seconds, you're going to shoot me again? Do you really want to shoot me again? Boss music has pumped on. Get a couple of drums hammering themselves. It's as though percussion became capable of abusing itself, just punching itself. These drums reflect the state of my, my brain. I'm out of bullet gun. Wait, really? Daddy no has gun? Hold on. Daddy Wick, say it ain't so. Give me that gun. Gun in the snow. Wait, this person still lives? Wait, how did this person survive? Wait, they didn't not just survive, they had never been hit. I am, uh, I'm perplexed, I'll admit. Pick up the gun. I love the tension here. I really need this person to get shot in the head and die. And we got another one, in case you wanted another one. Just these guys don't make it easy on John Wick. And you know what? Being John Wick doesn't make it easy on John Wick. So this boss is pretty cool. There's a bit of a trick to him, because bosses don't behave exactly like the regular enemies. If only there were a tutorial to inform us of that. Oh, bosses have more health. Their shots cannot be interrupted like other enemies. Their high focus makes them harder to shoot, so deplete focus via, via melee. 
to make life easier. Nothing like describing your video game design element as a, something in a lifestyle. I've come in here with my health not full. I'll tell you what, I sort of, I send my hope to fail. Because if I fail, I'm going to take a deep breath and refocus, get myself back up to 10 focus. I'm going to barrel in at this guy. We're going to barrel in. I'm going to get shot while I'm punching. I'm going to get my shot is interrupted. But I got him. We got two focus. We also knocked him off, canceled him off. He's got 0.9 seconds of stun. He's got 0.9 seconds of stun pumped in again. We're going to hit him again. John Wick is punching this boss. John Wick is playing football, and this guy is just trying to pitch me a baseball. I don't know what you think you're trying to do, weirdo. Get shot in the head right in front. Oh, you want to get shot in the head again? You want to try to run from me? You want to run from me like a moron? And we're going to go ahead and say, Baby's dead. Daddy's baking bread. Area complete. And do we want to watch a replay of that? The answer to that is obviously yes. It's funny that this man, this, this boss man, thought that he was inviting John Wick to a rigged, high-stakes poker game. When really, John Wick was picking him up by his pant legs and swirling him face-first in the jackpot. Gotta say I love it. Now, what I've just done right here is not exactly pro-level play. I will, uh gladly admit to you that I play way too many video games for not enough time each. I play about 15 different games a week. So whether this play appropriately communicates my mavenhood as regards the strategy genre, I leave it up to you to decide that I did ragdoll kill that murder that marionette puppet face first into the jackpot. I killed him. We're going to get to here. We get to see a little bit of this. This is neat. Game time was 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Real time, 31 minutes and 37 seconds. Love the idea of the game time. How much time passed in the world of the story versus the time that passed in the world of the real, also known as suck zone or earth or place I don't like. I would rather live in the magenta blood John Wick world than this strange hexscape we all breathe and slaver over. We're going to go ahead and continue. Edgar was loyal to the end. Can you get to move these scenes around a little bit? A little Metal Gear Solid. There's JW. You ever seen John Wick look happy? He never looks happy. But this was not the end of Mr. Wick's such. Oh, no. He'd barely begun. So they're telling me that that's only the very beginning of the game. It has been wonderful catching up, I must say, but there are other matters we could both be attending to. I absolutely love the fact that they got Ian McShane's voice in here. I'm only talking over him so that you can experience his voice afresh when you purchase this game yourself for $19.99 and uh, play it better than I just played it because you'll be able to play it in the luxury of your own living room or home or desk and not under the hot lights of a recording studio. Power defines our place. Power. So it's also interesting that while this is a prequel to the first John Wick, there are ramifications and implications in Hex's position here in the story that do tie in with somewhat of a level of intricacy to John Wick 3. And I don't want to say too much to spoil it. The powerful. Though I just want to say, John Wick Hex, man, John Wick Hex, Hex as in, the main character, main bad guy's name is Hex, and also that it's a strategy game known for hexagons. I like it. Hitman Go, the arcade game? Sure. Arcade-style strategy game? Sure. It's one character on your party, one one member party. It's John Wick before he owns a dog, so you don't get the dog as the second team member. Which is, uh, that's a bit, you know, it's a bit disappointing. Oh, it's not disappointing. It's a video game that with the, these little replays that they show you at the end of each match. It's it's pretty much a video game about action choreography, which I find interesting. Tactics maps as action choreographs. And that's just remarkable to me. There's really a... This cutscene is really long, and I thought it would be over sooner. 
talking over a, the adjudicator. He mentions the adjudicator is going to hunt him down. So that's that is uh, again anybody who's seen John Wick Three will uh, start to detect trick or treats, just kind of treats lurking around the corner here. And I love the way that we get Troy Baker here introducing the next level as some sort of scene of a massacre, some sort of a scene of an incredible action sequence that's going to occur that the player is going to plot out, plan out, and play out. He's foreshadowing hot choreography. And he's bringing us to this menu. I guess I can show you this real quick. This is the planning phase. Oh, I just want to say, uh, you might, who, whoever's, uh, you know, developers, you might want to, this, you want to fix this comma. You cannot save up continental coins. Use the location budget to stash bandages and spare weapons. I mean, you, you might want to read your, uh, your, uh, you know, elements of style there. Like, uh, it looks like you're saying that you cannot save up continental coins, use the location budget to stash bandages and spare weapons. So it's, it looks like it's saying you can't do any of those things. So, it should be you cannot save up continental coins, period. Use the location budget to stash bandages and spare weapons. Like, because it says right here, unspent coins are not saved. So, yeah. Increase the range of push attack by two. I haven't actually used a push attack yet. I mean, I used it in my other playthrough. I didn't use it in this playthrough. Move penalty on incoming shoot attacks is increased. Uh, lowering enemy hit chance. A whole lot of little choices you can make here. Dodge costs one less focus point. All very, very granular, hilariously brain slippery, technical. I love it. Brain slippery is the word I like to use. Like, god darn hot butter on my brain. And, um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all we've got. I like the fact that it's got a, like a speed chess mode. We're going to take a look at who's in this. Um, I like the fact that it's got a speed chess mode. I actually, when I play Civilization, I like to give myself a sort of a speed chess. I have this internal clock where I'm like, don't take longer than 30 seconds to make a choice. Always just boom, boom, boom. 30 seconds. It makes Civilization a lot more fun if you're making these decisions very quickly. Oh, music by Austin Wintory. Uh, did the music to the game Journey, if anybody remembers that. That game was, uh, it was somewhat, uh, somewhat influential. I like games that let you look at the credits. You get to see who made the game. It's nice. Chad Stahelski, who, uh, David Leach, uh, directors of the original John Wick. Stunt man for Keanu Reeves. Player testing was by Player Research. Okay, I think, are we, are, am I, I don't think we've had any fun here with the credits, I'm sorry. Lion Bridge Gaming. Right, that's, that's enough of that. I wanted to say, so it's, what do we got? Hold on, I'm gonna go back through this. Um, hold on, hold on. I just wanted to say that we've got this written and directed by Mike Bithel, who uh, did Thomas Was Alone, a game I have to support because I also made a game about um, geometrical shapes. Uh, code by Lottie May. Lottie May is one of uh, one of my Twitter follows, people that I follow on Twitter. I just want to shout you out there. Thanks for liking my videos and thanks for retweeting my tweets. It means a lot to me. And, uh, good job working on this good game. Good work on this game. This game's great. I'm going to play this whole game. It's available, uh, October 8th on the Epic Games Store. And, uh, I hope somebody enjoyed that. What do I got in my notes? I got more stuff in my notes. Do I have more stuff in my notes? Yeah. Here's the final point I want to make. I joked when the Google Stadia was announced that I expected there to be, because of the lag, the network lag, and it's anybody saying there's not going to be, or that the lag's going to be insignificant, anybody saying that is trying to god darn sell you a big old Mountain Dew bottle of snake oil, TBH. So the, the lag is going to be a thing. So I made a joke on Twitter about how I wanted there to be more big budget, super expensive, triple A turn-based strategy games on the level of XCOM, for example. And, uh... I just want to say this game, this game, while lovely in its style and such, if it were about, if, if, if they'd spent a lot more money on this, it would have been even sweeter. Now, I don't want to, like, talk too much about money, because I know this is a, treated as a nice little project, though. Can you imagine if this had the budget of, like, a Call of Duty? That's what I want. 
What if the cutscenes, what if the, the replays were indistinguishable from actual John Wick action scenes? I don't know, indistinguishable is probably pretty hard. Though, I feel like with that Google Stadia, we're going to see a lot of these turn-based games. Bring them on, I say. Unironically, I'm not joking. I think it would be great. And especially, I feel like this does a whole lot of fresh stuff with the strategy genre. It uh, incorporates elements of roguelikes. You've got your persistent inventory carrying over on these short maps, these episode maps. I feel like it's just brilliant. It's just a good little sweet game. And I look forward to playing all the way through it and then struggling to beat it on expedited mode. And uh, maybe you should try it out too. Uh, please bring it to the Nintendo Switch. Developers, uh, thank you very much. Um, that's all I got. I'm Tim Rogers. I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku. Dot com. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm done with this.